You know, if you were placed on this earth, you were meant to take up space, period, because my body alone takes up space. Why would I try to act like I'm not who I am? You know what I'm saying? I can be all of me and everybody else can adapt to that. returning welcome back so if you are returning as you can see I have a bit of a scene change as opposed to inside the house I am outside on my patio with that being said please ignore the background noises as much as possible I'm going to try to stop talking when I hear something loud go by or something like that but um I came outside because number one I needed the sun so I was actually sitting over there in the sun but it was too hot I couldn't do it <laughs> it was like gleaming down on me I could feel myself starting to sweat and everything I'm like oh nah so I'm in the shade but also my boyfriend is home and I'm not used to recording while he's here so I don't know why I have like this thing where it's hard for me to record in front of him as if I haven't like you know sang in front of him and I mean shit we live together so I mean what there's not much to have it done in front of him <laughs> so I don't know why I'm anxious about that or whatever but I think it's the perfectionist in me and not wanting to sound any certain kind of way or just you know it's kind of like eavesdropping in a way you know whatever we're here so we're outside today today's topic is going to be how to take up space because a lot of us were or have been told like we're too much of something not enough of something you have to look a certain way you have to be a certain way you have to act a certain way to be accepted and they just talked in my head but a really good example of this and i'm not coming for any sorority or fraternity i'm not coming for y'all rep y'all shit you know however y'all want to rep it i don't have no problems or no qualms against y'all live y'all life but to me this is a prime example because when i was in college i did try to be in a sorority you know and they didn't accept me literally because i was missing like one piece of my like application packet like we had to have a copy of something i didn't have the copy so i didn't get accepted and at the time it really broke my heart but i wasn't thinking of how how much I was doing and how I was trying to act or be perceived just so I could join this sorority, you know? And a lot of the sororities out there have like certain stereotypes or, you know, same fraternities, whatever, you know? And if you don't fit that particular type, like a lot of the times you're not really accepted. And that's just an example, but it can also be like, you know, church or whatever, right? So the Bible says you're not supposed to, if y'all really read the Bible, because some of y'all like to pick and choose what parts of the Bible you resonate with, what parts you don't. Y'all love to demonize people for not following parts of the Bible, but y'all out here wearing fingernails, nail polish on your toes, on your feet, I mean, um, on your hands, you know what I'm saying? Y'all wear the lashes, y'all got piercings, you got tattoos, everything else, but y'all love to demonize people for doing other stuff. So I'm not trying to call y'all out, but I am trying to call y'all out. Only the ones who, you know, fit the description of what I'm saying, but that's another thing so like say you know you grew up very religious but you like wearing nail polish and you like wearing toenail polish and you like piercings and tattoos and everything else you know you might be ostracized you know from that religion because you don't you know follow exactly what they say do or like you know back in the day if you went to an apostolic church which is a branch of christianity you had to wear like skirts you couldn't wear like jeans or pants and if you wore jeans or pants you couldn't come to the church you know so things like that or even just in your home like um, so for me for example like i felt like i wasn't noticed unless i was making good grades so like, if i didn't make good grades i kind of like just felt worthless like i didn't have any worth in the house and that's because i wasn't acknowledged for anything but grades you know like my whole life pretty much piggybacked off the fact that i was a smart kid in school which didn't even really amount to much because number one i cheated <laughs> and number two like yeah i'm smart but i hate school that's why i cheated that's why i procrastinated on like damn near all my assignments like but i, I mean i was smart but you know smart people know that you don't have to always smart people know real smart people know that book smart is not the only smart that you can be or that you need to be in order to be successful or to be yourself essentially and that's all i aim to do is be myself and that's all i'm trying to help y'all do is be yourself so this video is going to dive deep into that and talk about how you can, you know, start to take up space the way that you were meant to. You know, if you were placed on this earth, you were meant to take up space, period, because my body alone takes up space. Why would I try to act like I'm not who I am? You know what I'm saying? I can be all of me and everybody else can adapt to that. You know, the same way the ocean um, ebbs and flows against the beach and everything like that. Like, nobody's going to stop the ocean from ebbing and flowing, you know, because that's the ocean space. The ocean does that. Like that's the ocean's business so 
before I get into that, I do just want to say if you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I really appreciate the likes. The likes and the comments is really what circulates my videos around YouTube. Um, I really do appreciate the subscribers, though. I am trying to grow and build a community here and a platform. You can follow me on social media at The Poetic Mystic or at Zeri Music. I do post on both, but The Poetic Mystic is more my creative side and uh, Zeri Music is more, it's kind of like more serious in a way. It's more about like myself and my personal development and things I go through and it's more like this podcast type stuff so if you're interested go ahead and follow me I would appreciate it and yeah if you comment I'll comment back just keep it cute because you know you'll get blocked in a second I don't play that so let's get into it all right so to start I just want to talk about what causes us to play small and I touched on this very briefly but the main causes that make us or cause us to play small I feel like are trauma shame abuse mental illness and looking for love I feel like those five things alone will cause you to adapt or to manipulate yourself or mold yourself to fit you know certain spaces that you're seen as love so okay so trauma for example um, you know experiencing trauma as a kid can cause you to depending on how that trauma was caused it can cause you to shut down different parts of your body or parts of your psyche or things like that so that that trauma doesn't happen again you know it's a way of um, self-preservation um, when in reality you know you can't control what happens to you and we're all going to experience trauma at some point you know um, and it's not it's kind of like a never-ending thing it's as above so below if you want joy you have to accept that you know pain is a part of life as well and that you have to learn how to manage you know your emotions and how to you know cope with them essentially because it's something that's never going to stop happening and just because trauma happens it doesn't give you an excuse to treat people any kind of way or to behave a certain kind of way so being ashamed of things can also cause you to play small so for me um, growing up I was always very ashamed of my weight because I was constantly told by family that you know I was just too big and even now it's me pulling down my sleeves and this is kind of just like a knee-jerk reaction for me it's kind of like a, a subconscious thing for me to do because I'm kind of insecure about my stretch marks on my arms you know because just growing up I was always told like you gotta lose weight you're too big you're too this you know and as a child like that really hurts your feelings because as a child all you want to do is be loved you know for who you are just be seen and I wasn't seen at all as a child and so I was always very ashamed of my body I always literally I kid you not this is the first year that I have worn like shorts like a lot like I purchased maybe four or five pair of shorts um, just here recently and I've been wearing I have shorts on right now and for me that's big because I used to never wear shorts even somebody like I work with kids and even a kid in a kindergartner in my program was like Miss Nay how come you never wear shorts you know like why are you number one noticing me that much to where you know that I'm not wearing shorts but at the same time it just really brought to my awareness that like you know what are you so afraid of why are you not wearing shorts and it comes from shame I feel like I'm too big <laughs> um and that's sad you know but recently I did I bought some shorts and I've been wearing them you know confidently too so I'm, I'm happy to see the growth within myself but that's just an example of what shame will make you do you know it's hot as fuck outside but I really when I wasn't wearing shorts I didn't care how hot it was I wasn't going to wear shorts you know I will wear like leggings or I will wear something thin or I might wear a dress you know like a dress was the furthest I would go to show on my legs like I was not going to show my legs I wore jeans I wore jeans with holes in them you know I wore leggings I wore things that you know might contribute to airflow to make myself like feel cooler but I wasn't like putting no shorts on like it, I wasn't going so that's an example of shame I mentioned abuse so if you are verbally or physically abused I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory how those things would make you want to play small because being abused kind of tricks you into believing that you have to change a certain part of yourself so that you don't get abused you know um, this goes to physical and verbal abuse because ver uh, words hurt just as much as a fist if not more and um, I always relate that to my life because I've never like actually broken a bone or like I've been in one fight but it wasn't something like it wasn't like nothing deep or anything so like I can't really attest to the physical pain aspect but the verbal abuse and the spiritual pain you know and emotional pain that I felt it's been pretty deep it's been you know life changing life altering and the wind keeps blowing I really hope y'all can hear me over the wind because the wind do keep blowing but hopefully it's not going to mess my video up but 
but yeah so abuse can definitely make you change things about yourself so that you you know don't get abused especially when it comes to physical abuse because if you're getting physically abused of course you're not going to try to do anything that's going to make you get hit you know and that's why a lot of people end up staying in abusive relationships because they're afraid that you know if i leave i'm going to get hurt you know i could get killed i could you know potentially lose my life and if you have kids it's even worse you know because now i'm putting my kids you know lives in in danger i was gonna say at risk i was gonna say in risk so i'm happy i was able to like catch myself <laughs> i do think i'm a little i don't know if i'm dyslexic or if i just like have a scattered brain i don't know mental illness can cause you to play small um unknowingly because an illness is an illness so if you have a mental illness anxiety depression um and it goes deeper than that i only say anxiety and depression because in my opinion those are the most two common that you hear about those are things that i have experienced but there's also like adhd bipolar disorder there's autism there's a lot of different mental illnesses out here that sometimes we operate in these things and we're not even knowing so for us to play small due to mental illness that really um i feel like requires a diagnosis i take that back i don't think it requires a diagnosis because i diagnosed myself as depressed i ain't even nobody tell me i was depressed i knew i was depressed you know so if you're at that level of awareness to where you can diagnose yourself and know that you know i'm suffering from anxiety or i am suffering from depression or i have adhd or i'm bipolar you know if you can come to the awareness enough to know that then yeah it's definitely um beneficial for you to go ahead and try to figure out how to overcome that and i do have a video that i just posted my last podcast episode on anxiety and depression so if that's something that you resonate with you can watch that video try to figure out um maybe learn some coping mechanisms or some ways that you can um, deal with your anxiety and depression so that it doesn't you know kind of rule your life without you knowing that it's ruling your life but if you're someone who needs a medical diagnosis and you don't think that you're, you know, capable of doing this on your own, definitely seek help. You know, I'm never, I'm never against seeking help. I'll say that. I'm gonna just leave it at that. And then lastly, what I mentioned is the desire to be loved. You know, so as children, when we come into the world, that's kind of like our only job here is to be loved, you know, to be cared for, to be looked after. And as a child, when you don't feel love, it'll make you do different things so that you can receive love you know that's kind of going back to like shame in a way because you know as children we're conditioned to behave certain ways or act certain ways and you know certain ways aren't ladylike or they're not like a guy you know you have to do stuff manly you have to be girly you gotta you know form these gender roles you gotta do all these things you know just to be like a human when we was born it didn't come with a rule book you know we popped out the coochie there wasn't a book handed to us that said look you got to do all this now people might argue and say the bible okay but then what about the quran you know what i'm saying and there's other books like sacred texts or whatever that you could argue the same thing with at the end of the day none of us are born with those things we all choose to gravitate towards the things that resonate with us so i'm not saying religion is bad what i'm saying is we came here without a religion god didn't die he didn't bless us with christianity the moment we popped out the coochie he didn't say you're a christian you're Muslim, you're this, you're that, you're whatever. Like, he didn't say that. We made these conscious decisions as we grew older and as we decided what resonated with us or as we decided what would make us feel loved. You know what I'm saying? So some of us do things simply because we want the acceptance of people around us or because we want our family to see us as whatever image we're trying to uphold and maintain. When the real strength comes from, like, dropping your image because what image are you trying to portray outside of yourself? If people can't love you for who you are, then those people don't really need to be in your life. And that goes for family and friends. You know, you don't need anybody around you. And even if you can't necessarily cut them off, like, you know, say you're a teenager living at home with your parents and they believe one way, you believe another way. And you can't necessarily leave because you're a child, but you don't have to, you can distance yourself, you know? And if you can't physically distance yourself, you can emotionally, emotionally distance yourself if they are not willing to hear you out or understand what you're trying to say like if you're just stuck you know what i'm saying there are ways that you can you know just stay to yourself and it sucks you know it's it's uncomfortable and it's unfortunate um but hopefully maybe you have somebody that can support you like a friend or a sibling or you know someone else and these are just examples it's just hypotheticals so take it how it resonates and apply it to your own situation you know but nobody should have to walk around in a facade just to be accepted into the community that they're supposed to belong to form your own community you know march with beauty your own drum so i feel like something that i wasn't aware of was the fact that i was playing small until it came to me like having to put myself out there and do things and i found myself scared or hesitant or things like that 
So I just wanted to talk about a few ways that you may feel if you are playing small. So if you're not sure if you're playing small, if you feel like you're going your hardest, but um, maybe you feel like you can do more, which is why you're watching this video, you know? So when you're playing small, the number one way you're gonna feel is stressed. <laughs> you're gonna feel stressed because you're not being authentic, you know, because you're not being yourself. You're not fully opening up to who you are. And so because you're not doing that, you're gonna feel stress over the fact that you feel like you have to change a part about you in order to be acceptable or to fit in with whatever crowd you're trying to fit into. You will also feel stagnant, so you'll feel stuck in your life. If you can look around your life and nothing has changed between this year and last year, something's wrong. You know, there's most likely a block because we change so much in a year. So imagine still going through changes, but you're in the same position that you were in last year. That can make you feel very stagnant. It can make you feel stuck, like you're not doing enough, like you can't do enough, or there's reasons why you can't go after whatever you're trying to go after. So when it comes to um, playing small, you probably will feel stuck because you're not living at your full potential. You know, you're not opening yourself up to new opportunities or going after new opportunities. You know, a lot of us want to just sit back and wait for shit to come to us, but that's just not how it happens. You know, you have to put yourself out there. You have to talk to people. You have to be, you know, social. You have to learn new skills, you know, when you want new things to happen. If you do the same thing, expecting different results, that's the definition of insanity. You're not going to get new results, you know, so you have to do something different, which is show up as you, which is, you know, fully embody who you are. Don't feel scared to be that. Don't feel, you know, like, don't feel shame. <laughs> don't feel shame. Like they said, you should feel shame because you're not, you know, following whatever they said. Do who cares? Nobody made you God. Just know that they not God. Know that. You may also feel anxious, sad, and also start to settle for things. You know, you'll feel like, you have to accept what you are given because you cannot do x y and z without being ostracized or without being judged or you know whatever so you may settle for a job that you hate you may settle for a relationship that you don't really want to be in you may settle for the family ties that you have even though you don't want to you know necessarily be <laughs> you know in relation or you know i guess i don't know where i'm trying to use when you don't want to be involved I guess you know with certain people in your family or you know whatever you feel like you have to um you don't have to you don't have to so that goes into my next part and the last part of this video where I want to talk about how we can overcome playing small one of the major things I'm always going to say I said it before I have a whole video about this already is shadow work you know shadow work will help you identify the areas in your life that you could make changes that you could be doing better that you're not fully you know embodying that side of yourself or you're shushing part of yourself or you know and really all these parts of ourselves are they're just hurt that's really what it all comes down to is pain you know because you expressed this at one point you were told that this is wrong so you stopped you did it because you were hurt because you felt like you couldn't get love or receive love if you continue to do whatever it is that you did which isn't true because it's okay to show up as you as long as you're not harming anybody or talking bad about people or you know keep morality you know in play here like don't act like you can just be an asshole people are just supposed to love you like i'm not saying i'm not gonna love you but i'm not gonna deal with you so like don't act like that but as long as you're being a good person and literally being yourself isn't a harm to anybody like I said unless you are actively hurting people another way you can overcome playing small is to do something that scares you so typically which is like me when you know not recording in the house with my boyfriend because <laughs> I'm anxious so that's this is like a prime example of myself as a prime example like why why do I feel shame and anxiety for you know wanting to record you know in the house with him there i just i feel like it's a perfectionist thing and i'm scared that i might slip up or say something he's gonna judge me but like he's shown me over and over again that he's not gonna judge me so it's really an irrational fear which is why you should do something that scares you now i didn't do it <laughs> in this moment but i have done it so for example um getting up and doing open mic for the first time i was terrified you know i have really bad stage fright but i still went up there and did it and it opened a whole new door for me you know i received many opportunities after that i gained a lot of confidence after that i gained a lot of knowledge a lot of wisdom i learned more about myself you know i came into so much as a result of me facing my fears you know because as a child like nobody ever really hyped my singing up i used to sing all the time but nobody ever really hyped it up you know i did choir because i love choir and that was fun but like when i was singing like in the car like do little solos like whatever like nobody ever said you should do that like you sound good keep singing we're proud of you as a matter of fact I, my first memory of singing in front of people i was like 
I don't know, in fourth or fifth grade and maybe like 11 and I was at the summer camp and they was like, you know, we were going to the front and doing like a little talent show essentially. So I went up there to sing and, you know, I was super scared. I remember being so scared and my voice was shaking and I know I didn't sound good and people laughed at me, you know, like people laughed at me. They hurt my feelings, but if I kept that with me forever and was like, well, they laughed at me when I was, you know, 11. 25 now like at some point I have to let that stuff go you know and I finally did let it go and that's why you know I was able to come into so many opportunities because you know I decided to stay true to me you know singing was something that I wanted to do I felt happy singing I felt comfortable singing so I'm not gonna stop singing just because somebody don't like my singing you know what I'm saying like I like my singing somebody gonna fuck with my singing you know like you have to have that mindset and you know really approach your fears with faith you know know that what you're doing comes from within it's you you know it's, your, it's the purest expression of you and you can never go wrong with that like ever another way that you can overcome playing small is to do some root work some grounding work so when i say root i mean root chakra your root chakra deals with your security your sense of safety so a lot of times in our root chakra that balance we might feel like um our safety is threatened we might feel like our finances are threatened our home um, just whatever makes us feel stable, you know, so when your root chakra is out of balance, you'll frequently not feel safe You'll feel like you can't do something in fear that something's gonna go wrong or something's gonna happen Or like you're not gonna be cared for or whatever like that. So um, when it comes to doing root and grounding work um, This is best done outside Connecting to mother nature and the grass because that is the most grounded and connected you could get You know to the ground is the actual ground. So I like to walk around barefoot um, there's a good meditation that you can envision yourself as like a tree with your roots deeply embedded in the earth to help you feel grounded to help you feel safe you can have like you know physical reminders like in the present you know ask your significant other ask your siblings ask your mother you know for reassurance about you know your position in the world and who you are as long as you know they support you you know don't ask somebody who you know be on bullshit don't set yourself up and then want to come back here and be like oh i hate so and so no you knew how they was and you chose to ignore that we're not going to do that okay <laughs> go to somebody who you know loves you who supports you you know so they can remind you that you're safe i'm reminding you that you're safe you know which goes into my last point that can help with overcoming playing small which is affirmations you know affirm yourself remind yourself every single day that i am safe i'm capable of doing what it is that i you know set out to do i can achieve this i'm comfortable being myself i'm meant to be myself i was placed here to be myself i am confident i am gifted i'm loved i'm adored i'm admired you know x y and z like continue to affirm yourself over and over and over again every single day until you know you feel secure you know and even then like you know healing is a ongoing thing you're always going to do this you're probably always going to tell yourself affirmations because i feel like the moment you stop and the longer you keep not like having like a spiritual like hygiene kind of thing um you'll get thrown off again you know and you'll have to ground again so it's best to just do this thing do this continuously so that you don't have to like stop you know go back or regress to where you were and you can just start off you know and just build upon whatever it is that you're building all right so i think i said affirmation was the last one but i do have one more and that is to accept yourself that is to accept your perceived flaws right because to be perfect is to have flaws because we all have flaws you know what i'm saying so that means that none of us are perfect and that we're all perfect because you're never going to find somebody who is without flaw so the people around you who highlighted your flaws or accentuated your flaws and made you feel bad for your flaws, number one, know they were doing that because they wanted to run from their own flaws. They didn't feel comfortable within themselves. They didn't love themselves. So to take attention off of them, they put it on you, you know, and made you feel like you were, you know, an outcast or however people made you feel, you know, for whole, you know, for owning your flaws and just owning who you are, essentially, you know? So accept your perceived flaws like accept who you are you know like there's just no other way around it love yourself you know know that you deserve to be here know that this body was the body that was given to you and if you don't like something about yourself know that you have the ability to change it don't walk around with this victim mindset like so and so talked about me when i was five so now i'm traumatized like no if you don't like your body do something about it and i'm talking to myself with that but also those who deal with body um you know just body dysmorphia or any body related you know illnesses or problems that you perceive to have or you know whatever makes you play small i talk about my body because that's just the main thing that was highlighted for me as a kid but whatever 
you know, caused you to play small or whoever, you know, caused you to play small, just know that honestly they probably did you a favor because now you can love on that part of you even more. Because that's probably the part of you that's going to need the most love because people are going to, people are just mean. Some people are mean. It just is what it is and we're never going to get around it you know what i'm saying unless people start to love themselves and therefore love other people but while we're in the state we're in right now it's just important that we love ourselves you know hype yourself up because you deserve it you know just simply because you're here you're worthy simply because you're here you deserve whatever it is that you desire you shouldn't have to turn off parts of yourself or change parts of yourself just to be accepted or to be loved or to feel like you know you belong you know don't belong who wants to this shit is going to shits anyway. So who wants to belong here? You know, I don't. I'm 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 ready to go. Passport on the way. <laughs> I'm ready to fucking go. But you know, while we here, you know, you gotta make the best of it. So that's my video for today um, on how to overcome playing small. So I hope you resonated with this. I hope you gained insight and wisdom from this. And hopefully you can start to embody who you are a little bit more and to share that with the world because we all wanna see it, you know? We always we think nobody can relate or we think nobody understands, but y'all have seen it with your own eyes. Some people out here you would think wouldn't be famous, you know, because maybe their music is the best music or they're not the best person or, you know, whatever. But these people still have followings. They still have fans and supporters and everything else. So it's really just about being you. And that's why they have it, because they're themselves, you know. And I'm not saying they're perfect and celebrities have it figured out and they're just, you know, like mastered the shit. Nah, some people have had handouts some people have, you know, done different things to get to where they at. I'm not worried about all that. What I'm worried about is you doing you, you know, fulfilling who you are and being true to you. And then after that, you don't got to worry about shit because when you're doing you, you can't get any happier. You know, money, of course, can buy you things. But what matters on the inside is how content you are with yourself. Can you live with yourself you know what i'm saying like a lot of people get famous and rich and have all this money but can't live with themselves that's why people kill themselves when they get all that money you know the money don't really mean anything it's really about you you know how you feel and how you operate and show up in the world so i'm just here to say you know love yourself um speak kindly to yourself allow yourself to grow you know and everything else will fall into place don't be scared to be you please be you the world the world needs more people who are themselves so that's my video for today. I hope that resonated. I love you and until next time. Peace. Big wheels keep rolling, rolling on outside. 29, G5, Seaside. I've been losing friends and finding peace. But honestly, that sound like a fair trade to me. If I ever heard one and I'm still here outside. Front line, south side. I've been losing friends and finding peace. Honestly, that sound like a fair trade to me.